Hey, what's up everybody? It's David here with Tough Guys TV. And on this episode, we have something super special to share with everybody. We were lucky enough to team up again with Mazka Tools to bring you a really cool build. We're gonna be building me a new desk for my home office. Now, when I found the plans for the desk that I liked online, I noticed really quick that it was heavily focused on using a pocket hole system. So that led me to reach out to Mazka and I'm glad we were able to connect on this one. There'll be links down in the description for all the pocket hole jigs that you see in this video, the M1, the M2, and the twin hole system. I'll also have a link below for the plans so that you can try to build this yourself. So let's get started on this video. Links below to social media as always. Thanks so much for coming back to the channel. Let's get started. All right, everybody, we are done with all the cuts, I hope. So with that said, these are all the plywood pieces over here, and then over here are all the other one bys and two by twos. The next step is to begin the assembly process. I do wanna take some extra time during this process, as opposed to just a bunch of time lapse to actually show the details of the assembly, because I think that's the part that's gonna require the most skill. Not that doing all those cuts isn't difficult, but the assembly, using a pocket hole jig, especially if you've not used something like this before, is something that I do wanna help you guys with. So let's get right into that. All right, now the first thing I wanna do is show off how to use one of these twin pocket hole jigs from Mosca. All right, the first thing you'd wanna start with is setting the depth for your drill bit. And in our case, we're gonna be working with the inch and a half for the two by twos to start. But depending on what you were working with, you would wanna set this based on the depth of the board you're drilling into. So here for us, if we slide this in, I've already got this set. And you can see right there, I'm right underneath inch and a half, and that's where you wanna be. And if you needed to make an adjustment, you would just be loosening this up here with an Allen wrench in order to slide that collar where you need to get it placed for the correct board thickness that you're working with. Now the next measurement that you wanna take note of is here on the side. This one here, you'd wanna slide this to match the thickness of the board that you're working with. Again, I've got this at inch and a half. Now the last cool thing about this is this piece here on the end that we used to set the drill bit depth comes off and you can flip it around the other way. So you'd use it this way if you're butting it up against an interior joint and then switch it out for the way I'm gonna be doing it. And that gives me a little stop collar there to prevent this from sliding around. See how that grabs onto the back and the drill bit's gonna go in like this and it's gonna create the pocket holes that I need to attach all this together. Now you could just leave this on a tabletop here and just put some pressure and do your drilling or you could use a clamp. Okay, now let's unclamp and take a look. You can see a good amount of sawdust comes out of there. There's not like a way to hook up your back here unless you just wanted to have somebody else hold it right over those holes. Now hopefully you can see how clean and nice those turned out. And if position that just right, you guys can see down inside of there where it makes the secondary hole where the screw can fit into there. Now for this type of a project, you could be using a pocket hole screw. And you can see those have that long area there with no threads so that I can go through the opening in the wood that you've created. And to show how that would fit in there, that's how you'd be starting. 
and then as the screw goes through, it's gonna come out at the end and attach to the other piece that's butted up against it. Now, when you're using two by lumber, like a two by two, it's an inch and a half thick, but you wanna use a two and a half inch pocket hole screw. One final quick note, I just noticed that when I undid the clamp, it actually sticks to this. Now I can just slide it on the next piece and then just clamp it down. Now I'm not gonna go through a whole setup process here on the M1. We do have a video. I'll put a link somewhere here on the screen if you wanna check out a full video. But I did wanna show that you can still do the two by twos here, even with a little bit wider space. So everybody got to see the M1 and little taped off spots there worked really well to line up the two by twos for me, make that super fast. Now the M2, another link here, I can't put another link in the video, but I'll have a link in the description for the M2 setup. And basically the difference between the M2 is you've got these stabilizing arms here, which I think are gonna help me a lot because you look here, this next set, we're gonna have a lot of pocket holes on the edge of these big drawer pieces, which means we're gonna have to reset this or three quarter inch thickness, and then also set our drill bit up with the exact same settings, so that way we can get everything going. We're gonna do all of the one by pocket holes before we start messing with assembly and staining. I've got lots of one bys that I need to get pocket holes in. wrapped up with the pocket holes. I wanted to lay all this out, kind of show what you should be looking at. Hopefully you have some space where you can spread all this stuff out in your shop or in your garage. And obviously the next step here is to begin the finish, which I'm gonna need to sand and stain and basically do that before I assemble. I like to do that, and especially with this set of plans, you need to do that. Just because of the way they have it built, there's really no way to stain it after the fact unless you wanted to tape off a bunch of stuff. It just doesn't make any sense. So we're gonna go into staining and sanding, sanding first, then staining. That's the next step before we start putting everything together. Now what I've done here is I've laid out all the pieces that are going to be stained like a wood tone color. A little bit better view there. Everything else I stacked up here. For that, I'm gonna be using the Verithane Early American. They're all ready to go. So now we're gonna set up the camera and just show you going through the stain process. And before I stack all this stuff up, these are all the components. These are, this is one of the shelves. That is the frame that goes at the bottom before you set the top part together. This is the other shelf. These are drawer faces, which I decided to do the plywood. They say that you can do regular one buys, but since I wanted the whole thing to kind of look the same, I did the plywood for the drawer faces as well. These two pieces here are the sides. And then this of course is the top which I am super happy with how it turned out. I think it's gonna look awesome. All those have been stained, all those have been sealed. We sealed with the Minwax water-based matte finish. I did two coats of that total. The next step now is I need to sand down and stain all those other parts. And that's all the rest of the assembly. Most of it's just the two by twos, should go pretty fast. I'm gonna be sanding it with a couple of different grits on the Skill Orbital Sander. We have a video about this sander on the channel as well. It's the PowerCore 20. It is a phenomenal sander. I love it very much. That is the next step. This is what you should have left over after you've done and stained the parts that they call out to be stained. We're gonna sand these down now and get those stained. And we're gonna be using this Rust-Oleum wood stain, this antique white dries. It says in an hour, it is a very, very, slight white color. It is just really gonna accentuate the already white wood and give it a nice finish.
All right, all of these are now stained. And these parts here, I'm not gonna stain because these are for the drawer assemblies and I just don't care. You could stain those if you wanted to. So anyways, I got them set up on these little tiny pieces of scrap wood there to just give them some space to air out. And now I'm gonna let these dry and then we'll start assembly. All right, so we are at the point where we can start assembly. The instructions, I'm not gonna go page by page to show you guys here. These plans will be in the description so you can download these yourself. I wanna show a couple of these joints so you can see how the pocket holes are used and how they go together. And then I'm also gonna stop when we get to the point of assembling the drawers, like they have detailed here in the plans, because I wanna go over the process that they're calling for to create the drawers. I think that's very important to cover. So anyways, back here to step one, we're basically gonna be starting to assemble the frame. And my focus is gonna be, how do you start using these pocket holes in order to make the frame? Now, the way they're calling for it on the plans, and this is one of the legs, the pocket holes to be up. So they're calling for a joint to be attached like this. Now, I don't actually have corner clamps where I can clamp this in place. I'm basically just gonna be holding it and putting the screws in. We've got the two and a half inch screws and we've got a square tip bit here on the drill driver. One other quick note here is I took it off of full drill and I normally bring it down to 15 or 17 on this particular skill drill driver because I don't want it on screw setting because the torque can sometimes overdrive the screw all the way through and split the wood. I like to set these in place before I start. And there we go. It's got a nice joint. That is the basic idea here. Yeah, I forgot to mention, I did actually have to take this joint apart and go back and add my glue. Tight Bond Original is what we're using there. For the next one, I do have a clamp that I think is gonna be long enough, and I'm gonna spread the clamp across there to hold this one in place before I put the pocket holes in. All right now, with glue in the joint and the clamp holding it in place, do the same thing as before. Set our screws in the hole. You see a little bit of glue there. Now we've got a solid joint all the way down and we can use this clamp now. I know it'll fit for these other pieces that we have to build next. And the next part of that step one, just to keep it in the theme here, we showed you how to do the outside. Now this is a inside to inside trapped and it tells you attach using the two and a half inch pocket hole screws. And over here it tells us it wants that to be five inches up to the bottom. So from the bottom of here, we need to make a mark at five inches on both sides. All right, now with the clamp in place, we can go ahead and put the screws in from the bottom side. Now notice they called for these to be hidden, they're down low. The ones on the top are gonna to be hidden from underneath and the top will be on there so you won't see any of the fasteners once the desk is assembled. That's the idea of doing it this way. when you're finished up with those three pieces, this is what you should have. Two frames that look like this, and then one that does not have the center piece in it. And again, you did it to where you could see these from the top, but the way it's constructed, you can't see any of the fasteners after it's assembled, and that's the idea. All right, the next step calls for two of these, and this is the drawer face. Now they show the bottom of this thing stained. I did not stain the bottom of it because you're never gonna see it. Then once you attach two of these on either side, and then you're gonna make two of them the exact same way. Now this time we're gonna use the inch and a quarter screws because the thickness of this board, not the thickness of what you're screwing into, it goes off of the thickness of the board that you are attaching. So here on the back side, you can see the same screw pattern. So we have three in each side. So the setup there is basically that. Now I stood this up temporarily here and won't be able to show you guys too well, but I wanted to make sure that my, that the edge on the back side was flush. And what I mean by that is this line right here I didn't want the two by two to be canted sideways sticking out. 
So I wanted to check that on the other side. All right, so we've got this piece done. I'm gonna do the same thing with the other piece and I've got that same finish on both of these drawers. All right, our next step calls for this right here. Now that we've got those two shelves assembled and the two shelves are here, both of those are ready to go. So what I've got here is this thing clamped together top on each side so I can attach these first and then I'm gonna lay it onto its side to put the two shelf pieces in place. Okay, I've got all the clamps on there holding these two drawers in place. So a clamp at each end to hold the shelves in place. Now I'm gonna flip the entire thing upside down because all of the pocket holes I need to access are from underneath and I actually can't set it on the sides because my clamps stick out. Now admittedly, I probably made it hard for myself to get this bottom one, but I already have it clamped in so I'm gonna see if I can get to them. and the base is all together. Now this again, this is the side with the shelves on it. All right, the next step is to assemble this top area. And I had a little bit of trouble trying to figure out exactly how to set it up. It's a little bit weird to set it up, but I just put this piece out first and laid the two boards to attach this section so that it was standing up on its own. Clamped it down there, clamped it here, held it all together. And then I've started to set the pocket holes in there and these are glued down by the way, I glued them. They do mention some inch and a quarter wood screws. So I'm gonna put some of these around the perimeter really fast before I set this last one in place, which is gonna span a gap over here on this end. And that's the next step. This one is in place and it's actually 10 and 3 quarters from this side. I decided to go with that measurement as opposed to the other way. Next up here is the bottom rail. We're going to get that piece in and that was the 36 and a half. And then we're going to start moving into the drawers. Getting these measurements correct is going to be really essential to being able to get this part correct when we actually assemble the drawers and put them in. All right, we've got the two side supports in. Those are screwed in, these are not. And I also realized I need to stain the face of these, which I did not do. And I guess I might as well stain the sides so that way when the drawers come out, I guess, I don't know. I gotta mess with that. But I wanted to just set the top on to kind of get a feel for how this thing is gonna look. I think it's gonna be awesome. All right, we ended up staining the center supports and I went ahead and stained the inside of these just so that way when the drawers come out, you have a nice stain finished around the entire drawer. And for this one here, it's 15 and a half off this side. So same for this one. And what I did was I put a little bit of glue and I've clamped it in place. I'm gonna put the pocket holes in. And we're gonna do that for both of these before we put uh, the drawer assemblies together. to build these drawers here and I'm going to show you you've got two small ones and you've got two larger ones I think this is gonna be pretty straightforward because they have the base plate just basically sit onto the bottom and nail in so should be pretty simple let's try this out so essentially what they're doing is you're just trapping these front and back pieces inside of the box shape so what I'm gonna do is a little bit of glue and I'm just gonna clamp this together into a square and make sure that the bottom piece fits on it and we should be good to go All right, so we've got the box shape ready to go. Now let me grab the base. And here is that base piece. I just used this out of a quarter inch plywood and that fits on there great. A little bit more glue and that's gonna get tacked from the backside. First, I'm gonna put the pocket holes in here. 
Brian to put the base plate onto the drawer. Inch and a quarter uh, straight nails, actually inch and a quarter brad nails. Now if you didn't have an air nailer, you could just use hand nails on this. You know, you could turn it over and just nail it in, or you could just glue this, tape it up, let it dry, and the glue is gonna be more than enough to hold this on there, unless you're putting something super heavy in a two and a half inch deep drawer. build the other two and then we'll come back. All right, the next step here is to get the drawers actually installed into the cabinet. Let me show you how this works and what tools you're gonna to need to do it. These are the 22 inch Everbuilt full extension ball bearing slides that we got. They come in sets, so you buy this one piece and you're gonna get your entire you know, drawer. This is both sides, not just one side. And I've already got one installed, which I'm gonna show you here in a second. But what you're gonna need, you need a pencil, you need some kind of a shim. I'm using a 1 8 inch piece of plywood here, just a little strip. I'll show you how this works here in a second. And you need either a tape measure or some kind of a ruler because you do need to make some exact marks on your drawers and on the cabinet itself. All right, to show you what we are going for here, I went ahead and installed the middle drawer. You can see there it comes out nice, goes back in, and we've got a nice straight gap here along the front in order to have the drawer face go in there and have some room. You can see here, I do have a mark here on the inside. The distance between here and that is actually 1 16th of an inch. And this distance here is 3 quarters of an inch, which is the thickness of my drawer face, which we want to be flush with the front here. Okay, now knowing what we're trying to work towards here, which is a working drawer, let's show you how we're gonna do it on one of these. Now, first off inside the package, you should have some screws. Make sure you do not lose these. You're going to need them. You're gonna have two rails. There's the instructions hiding. The spot on these in particular ones that has the white little rubber piece, that's the back side. And the opposite side is the front that's facing out, the side you interact with. Now, the first thing you wanna do is extend this out Flip it upside down, and there's a little tab here that you're gonna pull out. A little tab here, you push that down, and this part will come off. Now I'm gonna be careful to keep these in the direction that I want them to be. I go ahead and close this up, so we know this one goes back in here. So this would be our right side. Now what they want you to do on the top of the drawer is mark an inch and a quarter down from the top. That's where the ruler comes in play, or if you have a tape measure, you can use that. For something this precise, I like a sharp edge where I can just line it up and make my marks. I should have a longer ruler here to draw the line. Okay, so now that that's there, so I'm gonna lift this up and we would line this up on the drawer to where it meets right at the top of our mark that goes this way. So this is the top, this is the bottom, and this piece here lines up flush with the front. Now you're gonna put three of those little screws in the top here. Okay, so this side's done. You're gonna do the same exact thing on the flip side of this. All right, so that's where this little shim comes in handy. I'm gonna use this to give myself a gap off the bottom. So we're gonna start by sliding that over. And that can sit in place. And now I don't have to worry about making that a line or making it level or anything like that. I know this is gonna work because it doesn't make the drawer too much higher, as you can see there than the opening so I can still put my drawer face on. Now to find out exactly where this needs to sit, I'm gonna take the drawer face, I'm gonna line it up flush with the front, take my pencil, and I'm gonna mark on the inside, or both sides. This is where I wanna have 1 16th of a gap right there between, so you don't wanna butt this up, you wanna have 1 16th of an inch. There's that. This side is completely ready to go. You take your spacer back out and move it to the other side and repeat. Now the last part here I don't know if I can show is when you feed this drawer in, you want the little pieces on the side of the drawer to meet in those grooves. And I normally do it with everything put in place like this. All right, and there is how that should look once it's in there. All right, and there's the drawer. We're gonna do the last one and then we'll be ready to put the top in place before the face is on. All right, all three drawers are in place and ready to go. Remember, we're not gonna put the faces on until we have the top on. So now I'm gonna grab this guy, and we're gonna put it on the top. Now, 
last thing here, I wanna put these drawer faces on and you want them to line up. So what I'm gonna do here on the backside, put a little bit of glue, hold it in place for a few seconds, and then I'm gonna tack it in place with a single, a single nail just to get it in there to hold it, and then I'm gonna pull it back out. I went ahead and put a couple of clamps over the tape so that it doesn't mess up the face of the drawer at all. And that little nail that's in there too, my pull is gonna be right in front of that, so I don't think it's gonna be an issue seeing it. All right, and our last step was to get the hardware installed. So I'm gonna show you guys how I do this. All right, so what I did was I used that same piece of uh, 1 8 inch plywood to make a quick template of where the screw holes are here on the hardware. And then I clamped that to the face after I measured center both ways. And now we're gonna drill. And you wanna make sure you use a drill bit that is bigger than the fastener. Once you've drilled, you can remove the clamp. You're gonna take the fasteners and feed them in from the inside of the drawer. So a hard angle to show here, the screwdriver on the inside, the hardware on the outside, gonna kind of hold it in place out here and then screw in those screws from the inside. Then once you get it screwed in place, you're good to go. You'll probably have some debris in here, so get that cleaned out as well. up this build i hope that you guys enjoyed this video and i hope that it helps you if you plan on building this desk overall i'm really happy with how it turned out i really love the finish and most of all i love the size of the desk just overall the size of it the distance i have this way to really utilize the space i love the storage that's in it i've got those two shelves on the back side i've got the three drawers across the front overall i really really do like this desk and i definitely recommend that if you're looking for a desk, this is the one that you'd like to build. And don't forget, links to everything down in the description, links to the plans, to all the tools you see featured from Mosca in this video. Anything you need to know outside of that, reach out to us in the comments or feel free to send us an email. Let me know, I'm here to help. Thanks so much again for watching this video. Thanks so much for the support on the channel. Can't wait to see you guys in the next project.